Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we actually have some news for Jurassic World Dominion. Specifically, some of the ideas that the movie originally had in store for the audience that seem to have now been altered from an earlier draft. <laughs> So with everyone laser focused on season 2 of Camp Cretaceous and the recent one year delay of Jurassic World Dominion, we haven't really been getting too much information surrounding the last film of the Jurassic World trilogy in a long time now. Well that all kind of changes today since an old Jurassic World actor recently got to speak about his involvement, or really lack thereof, with the new film and we also got some new information from Frank Marshall on how Colin Trevorrow was able to save a key action sequence in Malta that the film ran into issues filming. Let's start the conversation there first, because this actually gives us a good look at how Dominion solved their production troubles while they were filming the new movie. So in a recent interview conducted with Games Radar, Frank Marshall, who has worked as a producer on several of these films, happened to get a question involving scenes getting changed around due to the pandemic. The question mainly pertained to crowd scenes involving large groups of people and Frank was pretty direct and straight to the point on how one scene in particular was changed and handled. Quote, yeah that happened on Jurassic. We were supposed to go to Malta with the main unit and the week before they had a surge there. Our second unit was already there and Colin Trevorrow is pretty fast on his feet so he rewrote and rejigged a couple of sets with our crack production design unit. We reconfigured a big set that we have on the Bond stage at Pinewood to keep telling the story. And then the second unit was there and actually shooting some wide establishing shots and transition pieces that Colin worked with Dan Bradley on who is the second unit director. So they made it work. Now Frank goes on to say that this was kind of a bummer for everyone involved because as a producer he in particular loves being on set and he sadly never got to make it to Malta. But in the end Colin was able to repurpose some of the sound stages that they'd already built in order to shoot their scenes away from where the second unit was directing. So while the outbreak in Malta did pose a pretty big challenge to everyone involved, they were able to pull it off in the end. Now apart from that information, in another new interview done with Comic Book Dot com, Andy Buckley, who played Zack and Gray's father in the fourth film, revealed to the website that while he wouldn't be showing up in Dominion, that wasn't always the case. The actor would explain that, quote, I'm probably not supposed to say anything, but the quick answer is no, so it doesn't matter. If I was, I guess I couldn't say that. I think there was a time, there was a time I was in it, but then I think I got, you know, cut during rewrites. In other words, he hasn't exactly shot anything for Jurassic World Dominion and while I'm sure Universal was in talks to bring him back in some small capacity like what we saw of him in the first Jurassic World, it looks like that may no longer be on the table. Now while this may not seem like astronomical news in terms of returning cast members to a Jurassic Park movie, I want you guys to keep in mind that this actually does say a lot about what the new movie originally had in store. And I say that because if we actually go back all the way to 2015, Ty Simpkins, who happened to play Grey in Jurassic World, actually revealed that he was signed on to a three picture deal in regards to the Jurassic Park franchise. He's also said on numerous occasions that he would definitely return to do more Jurassic Park sequels no matter what due to the great time he had making the fourth movie. Now if we couple this information with the recent news that Andy Buckley will probably not be showing up in the new film despite originally being involved, I think that makes it kind of clear that we would have been shown a small glimpse at Claire's extended family early on had these ideas persisted into the final project. In Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Lowry, Zack, and Grey were sort of left out and replaced by new characters who Owen and Claire would meet along the way. Now we know that Lowry is still in talks to possibly return for Dominion in some way shape or form but it looks like at one point in time he wasn't going to be the only one coming back from Jurassic World. My best guess as to why some of these ideas were shaken around would honestly have to be the postponed shooting schedule that took place at the beginning of last year and also probably due to the film's cast already being packed with a ton of other returning characters that are coming back from previous movies. With Dr. Grant, Sattler, and Malcolm all joining Owen and Claire in substantial roles fighting against the likes of Dr. Wu and even Lewis Dodson, I think this movie is going to be pretty jam-packed to say the least and that's not even talking about the dinosaurs which we know are going to be all over the place. Anyways guys, 
What do all of you think about this info? With Jurassic World Dominion winding down its shoot and entering post-production, we more than likely have all of the filmmakers securing an early edit of the film and finishing up on visual effects right at this very moment in time. This has been a production that everyone considers to be quite a challenge, and while it seems that they've all managed to pull it off with blood, sweat, and tears, I'm curious to know what you guys think about the possibility of these old characters returning in an earlier version of Dominion. What do you think the involvement of Andy Buckley's character was at one point in time, and how do you think the dinosaur scenes in Malta were, quote, rewritten or rejigged in order to complete the story? Now, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.